Is it fun? Fun. Fun. <laughs> After me. Ready? Happy. Oops. Happy. New. 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 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Boom>. <laughs> Today is October 19, 2022. It is 2.22 a.m. A lot of 22s. Um, today, we're going to focus on art. Well, yesterday, some crazy thing happened to me. I was trying to finish edit all the stuff that I already had piled up because I knew Archwell was going to have the podcast coming. So I knew I was going to have a lot of things to share with you. So I wanted to finish everything that I did. Um, the recordings that I did previously and uh, I did finish edit them like around this time I will say uh, 2 a.m. I finished edit them and then I had some list that I had regarding the mount button thing scandal that just popped up and I wanted to read some of the stuff that was in it and uh, something told me way before even when I posted on my community board uh, told me don't even bother go through it uh, stuff like that but I was done I had nothing else to do and it was you know early morning the house is quiet so I said let me go read and then I'll record so I read a good portion uh, the beginning was not more about was not about the mount button but let's say maybe 10 minutes into it then I went and check the mount button things I probably will salvage some of those tweets and leave the mount button thing alone I won't share those things but what happened afterward after reading the mount button uh, debacle nonsense I just felt I don't know I don't I, how would I say it I don't think it was depressed I just didn't I wasn't motivated to edit it and I completely forgot at the beginning I didn't have uh, uh, things about Mount Batten. So from 2 a.m. till now, as I'm uh, recording this, that's when I decided to come back. So I turned off the computer. Oh, and right afterward, I did the cash app thing. 
um, I did a profile uh, account with them. So I shared it on uh, yesterday morning video uh, on the comment section, but I didn't bother putting it on community board, let people know about it. If you know, you know. So for those who wants to donate through Cash Pal, I mean, what is it? Cash App. Because uh, some of you say you don't do PayPal, you do a cash app and stuff like that. So that's why I did that. So while I was just staring at the computer and I was like, let me create that. So I, I did it. And then after that, I turned off the computer and I was completely off. I didn't feel like doing anything. So I listened to the uh, Arch type uh, podcast, uh, Arch Well. Oh my God. I did. Um, I listened to the Arch Well podcast. And it was pretty good. So most of the tweets that I'll be sharing, let's see, I create, there's a lot, I mean a lot, but this one, I think I'm going to focus on us type and some of the comments. And if I feel like it, if I still have energy, I have things regarding the crown, regarding princess Diana, regarding William and Kate and all of that. All right. So, but this one, I want to focus on us type. All right. The podcast. All right. Let's go on Twitter. Okay, so this is Omid. Let's start with him first. This week's episode of Osh Type focuses on the word bamboo. Megan is joined by an extremely candid at Paris Hilton for a conversation about the label and to explore why brains and beauty and a woman are often pitted against each other. Paris Hilton was not on my list of Osh Type at all. She was not on my list. I was pretty much surprised. Okay, but a couple things that popped in my mind when I was uh, listening to the podcast. Two things. One, it's the group that, uh, that were mentioned in the po uh, podcast, Paris Hilton. Um, I think Britney Spears was part of that group. Uh, Lindsay Lohan and something else i don't remember there was someone else in that group that was mentioned i remember during those time when they're going out partying and whatever i remember uh what's that uh, um, tmz was following them and i think that was around that time tmz was starting to come about and uh they there was this guy I believe I don't know his name never seen him ever since but they claim that he was a, a son of a oil tycoon kind of thing and he was mocking them okay especially I think Lindsay Lohan and Britney Spears and stuff like that saying really nasty things that's not even worth repeating and then after that things happen to these ladies that's from the outside i'm not saying this is exactly what happened to them but from look from a person from the outside this is what i remember thinking and processing after that guy said something to them their life this lady's life we just went down spiral lindsay lohan had issues britney spears had issues and then uh, Paris Hilton, I don't, based on her, uh, the podcast, it seems like it happened before, but to me, it feels like it was during that time after that guy said, uh, whatever he said. All right. So that crossed my mind again. And I think I had touched it very lightly once before in one of my podcasts way before. Okay. So I don't know if I don't know. I'm just telling you what what came to me as I was listening to the podcast. The other thing is that came to mind is uh, uh, Sydney Party. What does Sydney Party had to do with uh, Megan's podcast? It's the fact that the way that uh, uh, Paris Hilton was saying, and uh, she was uh, very obviously anybody who's making money on uh, on the media and stuff like that are very smart. All right. So one of the things that crossed my mind was Sydney Poitier. Sydney Poitier, I believe, was born in the U.S. but raised in the Bahamas. That's what I believe. And I'll look it up. Just look at the screen as I'm saying some of the things on top of my head right now. And he was already a self-made man. What I mean by self-made man is that he was not... Uh, uh, I don't want to say a word, uh, something that is wrong or or defame anybody but so he 
I guess he was already know who he is as a man. Okay. So when he picks uh, certain roles, he think of how he's going to portray it in society. Or in other words, he sort of understand the media, how the media could frame people, uh, typecast people, let's say play, um, playing things like gangster or uh, things like that. So they will assume every black man is a gangster or something like that. I'm just giving an example. So Sidney Potty was a, was a man, he passed, okay, who even though he didn't have a lot of money, I believe there was a movie that he made where he, I think he was a dishwasher person, right? And then they, he, he was offered to make certain movies and he will be making, I don't remember the number amount of money that he will be um, pay for that uh, particular role. He turned it down when most people would have assumed that they will go for it and then leave the dishwashing kind of thing away. But Sidney Poitier was thinking way beyond his time. Okay. How he was going to be portrayed. The thing that he wants black men like him to see themselves in a different way, but not as the character he's portraying on TV or on the show or on the job that he was, um, that, uh, they offer him, which he turned down. I'll look for things to back that up, but I'm talking on top of my head. Just keep your eyes on the screen. I probably, if you don't, well, you won't even know if I, if I don't find the information, I won't even, uh, include that. But right now I'm talking on top of my head. Um, but from base things that either I watched, listen or read. All right. So, okay. I hope I make sense with that. So, in comparison to how does Sydney Poitier come in with, uh, Paris Hilton? Paris Hilton knew she was just playing a role. Okay. She was just playing a role and have fun while doing it and stuff like that. But one thing I realized a lot of people who do acting sometimes lost, they get lost in their role. They become that character. In my humble opinion, I feel like that's what had happened to her. She got lost in the role. And when she knew she was much more than that, and it was hard for her to get out of it. I hope I make sense. I don't know. So sometimes when you see certain people turn certain roles down, uh, like uh, Sidney Poitier, where he could have need them, uh, used the money at that time very well, you know, dishwashing and movie role, you know, um, he didn't do it because I guess he didn't want to, I'm not speaking for Sidney Poitier. He already stamp his name on uh, the history book he already made himself uh, known of who his character like harry said it's your character it's your character that matters most he already proved himself the character of a man that he is all right so i guess him turning certain roles down he didn't want to be cast type and then want to turn into these type of characters all right so that's couple things that I learned from, um, as I was listening to the, uh, the podcast that crossed my mind. Oh my God. I'm already 10 minutes. I didn't even get started yet. Also, as I'm editing this video and I, I was talking about TMZ, something came to mind because when I started putting the uh, screenshot of TMZ when TMZ started and around the time when uh, Lindsay Lohan, uh, Britney Spears and uh, Paris Hilton were hanging out in the nightclub and all of that. So n knowing that TMZ is on, I believe it was Fox. Let me look at it. Yeah. So TMZ is on by Fox Cooperation. And then that show, I think Simple Life, that Paris Hilton was uh, being aired on was on Fox, from what I remember. So all of this, it was framed. She literally was playing the role even as she go out. So she never really differentiate herself. You know, you know when you're acting, well, I don't know. I don't even know myself um, being in that business. But I will assume is that there was never a stop. Okay. You know, like when you go to work to most common people like myself and you who goes to work. Okay. So when you're at your job, 
or your establishment, you put your working mode on. Okay. You know, you there to earn the money and you need to do what needs to be done. And then you do it. Once you know you are at work, you know, you are at work. Then once that clock time or 5, uh, 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. is up, you know, you're not at the, your boss's time anymore. You took that hat off. You become yourself. You're worrying about your kid. Did your kid eat uh, dinner or whatever? So there is a differentiation. But what I see here from what I've observed as a consumer, as a consumer, Paris Hilton never took that hat off. So when she's going out, hanging out with her friend, she was still acting that same portrayal as the sample life. That's what I get from it. I'm just explaining from my understanding. I was there. I was a witness as a consumer. Okay. So I used to follow this stuff. I didn't agree with it, but these things were being shown. So TMZ was, uh, was it was part of the whole show. Now I'm going to put a clip from the Johnny Depp thing to express my point of view, because if, uh, because, uh, TMZ is owned by Fox and they were starting to establish themselves because I think it was around November, 2005 and 2007, they were getting themselves, you know, in the mainstream for people to know them. So they were using, Okay, TMZ was using the kids. Like I've always said, they use young kids to get their foot on the ground. And they use Paris Hilton, the Britney Spears, all those young hip names at that time. So TMZ is part of the problem. Okay, so here's the clip from the Johnny Depp thing to show you what I'm talking about. So TMZ, uh, Probably, in my humble opinion, as a consumer from the outside, not ever speak to any of the TMZ people or Paris Hilton herself. They knew she was going to be there and they probably made her go there so they could uh, catch the young people's attention. All right. So here's the clip. And then I'll get back to the podcast. So I have to tell you what was going on in my mind at that time when I was listening to the podcast. All right. So here's the clip. And then we'll go straight to the podcast after that. Whatever I've recorded earlier. Is that the TMZ guy? Uh-oh. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to testify truthfully in this case in the penalty of law? Good afternoon, Mr. Tremaine. Hello. Would you please state your full name for the record? Morgan Cliff Tremaine. And what do you do for a living? Uh, I produce esports events and design video games. And in 2016, what did you do for a living? I worked as the field assignment manager at TMZ. Ooh. I worked as the field assignment manager at TMZ. Ooh, the TMZ what guy. is TMZ? TMZ is an, enter uh, an entertainment news uh, website and television show. TMZ is an, enter uh, an entertainment news uh, website and television show. And what were your responsibilities as a field assignment manager for TMZ? Uh, I was the go between the news desk in the office and the reporters in the field, which you might know as paparazzi. The news desk in the office and the reporters in the field, which you might know as paparazzi. Approximately how many paparazzis were you in charge of? Uh, at the time, it was about 20 in LA a handful, maybe three in New York, and then one in DC. And what were your responsibilities specifically as to the paparazzi? It would be to dispatch um, paparazzi to various locations based on tips or um, just direction um, dictated by having a list of sort of hot spots where celebrities would be. It would be to dispatch um, paparazzi to various locations based on tips or um, just direction um, dictated by having a list of sort of hot spots where celebrities would be. And how were those tips received? They were received either through tips that we received through our tip line or directly through um, news producers in the office. They were received either through tips that we received through our tip line or directly through um, news producers in the office. And were tips frequently received directly from sources? Um, very often the case, yeah. And who were the type of sources that TMC received tips from? Um, they would receive tips from, oftentimes it would be publicists, managers, agents, or B-list celebrities. 
oftentimes it would be publicists, managers, agents, or B-list celebrities. Lawyers? And lawyers, definitely. How are tips verified? Tips are verified um, by an extensive process. If they come in through our tip line, we have to verify who sent it, that they um, that the source is truthful, and so they have to uh, add their contact information, which is a field in that um, yep, on that up. website for like name, uh, phone number, things like that. And how long did that process typically take? If we receive a tip through the tip line, um, it could take a while because that would need to be, if it was a tip, we would need to verify it. If it was media, such as photos or videos, that would need to be extensively verified to ensure that the person sending it is the copyright holder and that we would have the legal ability to air it and distribute it. And while working for TMZ, were you involved in any assignments related to Ms. Heard? I was. Uh -oh. What was the first time you recall working on an assignment related to Ms. Heard? Uh, I believe it was May 27th, 2016. And what was your role in that assignment? For that, it, Ms. Heard was filing a uh, restraining order at a courthouse in downtown Los Angeles. So um, I dispatched camera people to that location. And what was your role in that assignment? For that, it, Ms. Heard was filing a uh, restraining order at a courthouse in downtown Los Angeles. So um, I dispatched camera people to that location or directly through um, news producers in the office. All right, so that's that. I read that already. Let's read some of the comments. This episode is so fascinating. Paris' voice is so smooth and lovely. Wow, never knew Paris was more than this dumb blonde archetype. Well, I think I have an, a little, uh, how will I say that? A little, the same way that I say about uh, uh, the Kardashian, a lot of people tend to uh, badmouth them. I've spoke about the Kardashians before, and I'm like, uh, they're doing pretty well to be in that, you know, part of the conversation and uh, pop culture and all that. We may not approve some of the things that they do, but I think they're doing pretty well. People are watching their stuff, so they're giving content. That's all it is. I, so I think I sort of had a basic understanding of uh, Paris Hilton, this kind of thing. But I must say though, with the TV show that she did with, uh, what's that, uh, The Simple Life with, uh, oh my God, what's her name, Nicole Richie, I, they got me on that part because I think, um, you know, I think at one point in one of my podcasts I spoke about um, um, uh, who came with reality TV and I think I went way back I don't remember all of the th stuff that I said but I think I spoke about reality TV who started first uh, but when reality TV was starting to take shape I think the simple life the thing she played with uh, Nico Ricci I think they got me on that because what uh, this might interfere with some of the things that I've just said but when I first saw the reality tv i thought they were really doing things reality you know the real kind of thing but later on as i started watching and stuff i was like there's no way there's no way they could be like that there's no way they this could be this or something i, I started questioning myself and that's when i started to differentiate but when it first started they got me thinking that this is who they were who they really are but um like i said but later on as the show continued and i realized nah, that can't be them all right the same way you know i question the uk tabloid and then here i am talking making uh podcasts almost every day for you guys where because i question the british media regarding megan everything that they wrote about her was negative negative so the same thing with the show i started questioning it i was like there's no way they could be like that and then i started to differentiate them and stuff like that all right i hope i make sense with that but they did get me and uh, with reality reality mean this is your everyday way your way of doing things but hey it was catered to a way that you know they wanted to portray i guess women and then He's, she sort of fell into it. And I have to give uh, Nicole Richie some prop because 
uh, after that show, I didn't, she probably have done several things in the background. I'm not aware. Like I said, I don't follow a lot of people, but her life is pretty, you know, shape up and things like that. Uh, we need to come uh, differentiate when she was young and as an adult because she's a mother. I think she married one of the um, brothers. I think it's one of the twin. Uh, what's the uh, musician? I forgot. I spoke to <laughs> about them as well in one of my podcasts. It's funny uh, that I'm mentioning them again. Uh, this actress married the other brother. Uh, uh, I can't think of the name. Just look at the screen. I probably will put the pictures on the screen. All right. But uh, I haven't heard much about Nicole Richie. If I'm pretty sure she's probably doing some business thing in the background. All right. But um, her life, I've really, um, I guess, with the guide of her father. Uh, you know what? Let me leave that alone because I don't know. But <laughs> let's continue. All right. Lovely, insightful conversation from Megan and Paris Hilton. Okay. I was actually surprised at how much I enjoyed the episode. I didn't think I could relate to the guest, but the more I listened to her, the more I got her. Like, wait a minute. Why did I used to think that? All right. This was a great episode. I had no idea Paris Hilton was like this. I totally fell for the dumb blonde persona. It will make people do that. It, it, uh, yeah, I don't doubt that at all. Okay, the bamboo is not just a fit for the dumb white woman scenario. Uh, it can fit any woman of color scenario. Every day, smart women are told to dumb themselves down to fit with men they work with to make them feel not threatened and comfortable. We are told to be less than ourselves. Th that's one thing I have to say uh, when I worked and... In an office and things like that you thinking that you at the firm okay the main goal is the firm to make the firm look good I, nothing in my wild dream will make me think the people within that firm are competing with each other I this really shocked me okay this really shocked me I never knew people were like that yeah, this is very sad. Oh, that's interesting. Not a guess I will have expected. Yeah, it surprised me I don't, as well. Paris Hilton was not in my one of the surprise guests, but I'm definitely here for it. Okay. Listening to what happened to Paris at the boarding school is heartbreaking. And one thing that she said as she was saying it and I was thinking about it, then she said it, is that Maybe because of her platform, maybe it was meant for her to be there to expose what was happening in those boarding school. As she was explaining her experience, I was like, well, not that I was happy for her. You know, it's traumatizing for her. Why would I be happy for her? But as she was saying it, I remember thinking, well, maybe it was meant for you to be at one of those boarding school to share your experience to the world. And then later on, she said it. And I was like, this is how freaking smart she is. She is. She's, she did say it in, in some shape or form like that. Maybe it was meant for me to be there that way I could experience it I mean I could uh, tell the world about it in some shape or form okay let's see here it was heartbreaking having Paris experience at boarding school fortunately she, she survived it and is now using that bad period in her life to help others and her advocacy work Me uh, Megan is a brilliant interviewer oh my goodness I've said it way before especially during the 19 when I <laughs> I was like, this is one person. If I'm being interviewed, I don't want a person like Megan to interview me because she makes you feel comfortable. And she did say it in that podcast. She was like, it's a safe place. Uh, in other words, you don't have to talk about things you don't want to talk about. Just be yourself, this kind of thing. And I did say it. And I said, if you've done something horrible and you have someone like Megan interview you, Guess what? You're going to spill more beans than you wanted to spill. I've said it way before, maybe two years ago. There it is. Yeah, she is. She is. And then uh, in response, Megan was like, I'm not a got you moment. I'm uh, what was the term she used? I'm more of, oh, I forgot the term. I hope I come across it in one of those uh, comments. All right. Uh, just finished listening. Another great one. 
uh, can take so much away from this one again, especially being a mom to a very smart girl who sometimes dumb herself down so no one call her Miss Know It All or You Such a Nerd, but she is slowly coming into herself. Okay, what was it yesterday? My son took a math test and he is one of those kids, my youngest, where once he is interesting about something, oh my God, this kid will literally teach you those things that he is interesting about okay so math is one of the things he hates okay so since last week we knew he was gonna have a math test yesterday so throughout the week last week i'm giving him little things at the time to do once i pinpoint his problem so i give him more of those type of things he was having issues with and then he gets it so yesterday when he came home and i asked him how was the test he was like oh it was good and i asked him did they ask this exponent did they ask this decimal point did they ask that da, da, da. he was like no and i was like how did you feel the test oh it was easy and i was like you see this is the thing that's what i want when you take a test to see it's easy when i work with you at home i give you the most difficult ones, the ones that you are having problem with that way i prefer you make mistake at home but not at the test when it counts the most so i guess i'll wait to see what happened because for me the day before the test i didn't give him that much but throughout the week last week i was giving him a lot of things and once i started realizing where he was having problem like for instance if he's multiplying with decimal point all i had to tell him look don't worry about the decimal do all the multiplication the way you always do and then at the end you worry about the decimal point and then that little thing got him and then i give him uh three digit two digit five digit and so forth so on where sometimes i put uh, uh whatever three dollars point one okay and then the other thing he has to multiply is maybe i don't know 75 dollars and 25 cents right so just because of the point one that doesn't mean there's no number behind it all you have to do is put a zero and i tell him to think of it as money three dollars and ten cents okay ten cents there's point one zero so i think eventually he got it and then the thing become easy for him so this is the thing what was my point <laughs> of that let's be okay miss know it all yeah him um what i had to do because he's really good at a lot of things but when he's not into something you really have to really push him to make him understand and once he understand it forget it he'll teach you it all right megan the stalin is a nerd she grew up as an only child loved anime drawing and doing what she was told she said that her grandma told her quote megan you're gonna go to college and quote mts a rapper but she says quote okay i guess i'm going to college and quote she graduated december 2021 <laughs> Oh, she recently, I don't know about that. Growing up, I was very good with numbers, did very well in mathematical subject. This upset a lot of people. My own teachers would root for the boys. There's a slap in the face. And by the time I got to uni, the attitude from male classmate became so toxic. I wasn't supposed to be good with numbers. There's the rolling eye. <laughs> I'm sorry you live through that. The creature with the Y chromosome is weak in many ways, excluding upper body strength. I felt bad for our many female co-ed student in the sciences. I recognized early that their male classmates lack social skills and were social awkward. All right, let's read some more and then move on to the next. Okay, the fact that a certain set in society can reconcile the woman can have both beauty and brain is called categorically narrow and misogynistic and then when you think about when you look at the world just in general who's running by men who create wars who create all sort of crazy things why when they could just talk it <sighs> but anyway one of the examples regarding uh, female run countries i spoke about um I think New Zealand with the female prime minister and some other places that have women as their top. Uh, oh, that was another one. I was talking recently where they were uh, making fun of her because she was at a party dancing with her friend. And then one of her friends put the picture, uh, the thing, and then they were bashing her for it. Uh, but 
the thing is that there's always, I guess, the uh, the motherly kind of thing kick in when it comes to this kind of thing. They know how to uh, not settle, but uh, put peace into things. But men, all they want to know, use your kids to uh, destroy each other. I don't know. But and, and we have to blame some women in that aspect as well for knowing the fact that these people are not really helping them, but yet they're voting for them still. Uh, we all take blame on that. All right. <laughs> and at the same time, some women are not uh, running for those office. Hey, I guess I have to blame myself too. I'm not running for those things because it's not made for people like me. All right, let's read whatever is on the screen and that's it. Okay, this is French. Looking forward to listening later. Every episode has been brilliant. That's why I love today's us type with Megan. Conversation between Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, and Paris Hilton. They're so hot. We need more conversation like this. Great to see Megan's podcast is very well balanced and the topics discussed. Yeah, and I was going to say, nah, let me not go there. Okay, just love Megan's guest. Also different. You could listen to her for hours that's why and i was very surprised i have to go listen to it i feel like i missed maybe a fifth because i was doing things around the house as i was uh, listening to her i felt like it was too short i don't know why i didn't feel like it was like an hour or 45 minutes or something this was another awesome episode all right let's go to the next tweet oh my god i took 26 minutes next tweet all right quote i never want my daughter to think it's cool to pretend to be a dumb blonde or dumb herself down for society or for anything like that as i'm reading this this is also letting you know remember the part where uh was it uh, Oprah was saying to Gail, it was not part of the interview but uh Oprah mentioned it later on that uh, uh they told megan to be 50 percent less of herself mm -hmm. told been given advice uh, to uh, that it would be best if she could be 50% less wow. than she was. Wow. That was the quote. If she could be 50% less. And wow. I remember hearing that in 2018 and said specifically to her, I don't know how you're going to survive being half of yourself. All right, but anyway, all right, I want her to feel free and be anything she wants to. Uh, and to be strong. Paris Hilton on Osh Type with Megan. It was an eye opening interview, a must. Okay. And uh, the other person that I that crossed my mind as I was listening to her is uh, Nicole, Nicole something. Nicole, uh, she passed. Um, oh my God, what's her name? She had big boobs. She uh, she had a son, and this, after she passed, her son passed. Uh, maybe months after and she has a daughter who's alive right now who's living with her father because when she passed away uh someone else claimed he was the father but um to court documents court battle the real father uh fought for oh my god what's her name nicole uh not nicole brown nicole something i forgot her name she died in the caribbean and then soon after no, her son died first, and then a little after, she passed away. I guess the death of her son, she couldn't... Uh, oh my God, I can't think of her name. So that crossed my mind because uh, she was using the media, all right, to make, you know, to make, to make a living, this kind of thing. She was very brilliant as well. She crossed my mind as I was listening to that. Okay, many people may not like what she portrayed at that time. Uh, may she rest in peace, by the way. But uh, once you look at the screen, you'll know who I'm talking about. Um, but uh, I thought she was brilliant for making a living that way because people were watching. All right? I totally get this. I despise and go out of my way to not dumb myself down for society or others. And I've been attacked literally and metaphorically just because of that. I don't and won't ever feel sorry for not dumbing myself down. Um, if she is even real what who is she sick help who are they talking about if she even will okay but whatever but uh as long you live your life that's the way i see it live your life the best way you know how as long you're not hurting people all right don't dumb yourself down for anybody just be yourself okay now we know better so we could teach our kids you know based on what we've learned teach our kids 
you know, what we already learned. And it was funny also, I'm putting the next thing on the screen. Um, it's funny as well. The other day we went the uh, apple picking. My youngest, I'm telling you, my youngest is more alert than anybody. He said something. Uh, I think uh, there was the bag of apples my husband was carrying. I didn't want to carry anything. And my kids, I bought more apples than I, I knew we would eat because the kids will not eat it. But the experience of them picking the apple in my head, I knew I was going to give apples to neighbors, to people and all of that. All right. So the experience of the kids doing, they've done it before, but since the pandemic, we didn't do it. So we went again to do it. And while we were there, and I think this will be the last time because they're too old for that. So my youngest said something as my husband was carrying the apple. And, uh, and I said, oh, you carry it. Oh, my husband was already carrying it. And I was trying to help him relieve the load put some stuff, you know, help him carry something. And my youngest says, oh, men are stronger than women. Okay. 10 years old. And I said, what makes you say that? He's like, it's very well known. And I said, why will men have more uh, strength? I was thinking more of strength. That's it. When I was discussing that with him. And I said, in terms of, uh, what's that thing? Um, their hormone was, uh, uh, what's the thing? Oh my God, my vocabulary, all of my words, the thing that I'm thinking of, I can't think of it. You know, uh, people inject themselves for that, uh, stay word to get that hormone. Uh, that's what I was thinking. I told him at that time, I remember the word, but right now as I'm recording, I can't think of the word, but that's what was in my head when I was asking him why men physically stronger than women. And he started telling me all of this. And I was like, don't ever think that way. This is where you you teach kids as they go along as they show themselves who they are all right so in his head he thinks women are weaker and some other sense that he was mentioning but i corrected him at that time and i said no they're physically stronger because of the particular hormone i can't think of the hormone right now that's why they're more uh stronger than women but in terms of intellectual in terms of other things it's not Okay. And I sort of explained to him and, uh, you know, at his, well, I think I went f f straight on with him because he was talking some growing up things with me, you know, things that society already have in young boys head. So he caught that already. This is the thing. If you pay attention to your kids, you'll be surprised how much they know. Okay. He brought it up. Then I corrected him on that spot. And then sometime, uh, your husband will tend to joke about certain things but if you're in the present you catch those things it's good to tell your husband okay it's okay to say certain things with you privately but around kids they may not get it so it's gonna be another additional things to teach your kids because if he's listening to you growing up saying it meanwhile in the sense that the growing up was saying it was in a joking way Okay, because there's certain things my husband will not say in society at all. But when he's joking with me, I will get him. And then I will joke, you know, turn it right back at him, you know, joking back and forth. Um, but if you're saying certain things like that in front of kids, they will assume this is it. But growing up, you, when you understand your partner, the way of joking and things like that, you will get your partner. But sometimes when you say it around other people, they may not get it. They will think you being his misogynistic, this kind of thing, a uh, womanizer, whatever you may think uh, it may be. But if you're joking with your partner, you will get it. I don't know if I'm making sense. There are things you will say to your partner that you will never say to anybody else not just in, in terms of sexual way or anything joking in terms of jokes this kind of thing if you understand that part you will understand what i'm trying to say about this part but certain things you don't say in front of kids because they will assume this is how it is in society they may not get the joke so sometimes i'll cut my husband saying certain things over my kids and i will stop him and say no don't say that if we're in private together you could say it but don't say it in front of the kids this kind of thing. All right. So this is the next tweet. Listen, it's one of the most successful podcasts they have right now. They better. 
Okay, so she retweeted that. There's some comments. This is V. Uh, Meg makes unexpected appearance at Spotify Women event. I'll go into that in a few, but let's read some of the comments so I don't come back to it. It's not that much. I see more speaking engagement and panel on her future. They know where their bread is buttered. <laughs> I sign up for pay Spotify because of our type. I agree 100%. I love seeing her like this. What, uh, what no is, okay what no is it at again okay i don't get that but whatever but let's go into that i don't know if i have this someplace else megan makes an unexpected appearance at a spotify women event okay women spotify all right let's see here uh quote megan had spoken at the event on feminist issue wearing a shirt that had a message quote women life freedom Okay, written in Farsi language. Here's an example of the t-shirt. Okay, oh, this quiet moves, loves it, moving in silent, fire. Okay, is there a video? Not that we know of. There's the broken heart. Uh, this is great, the broken heart. This is great, there's that. Okay, oh yes, this is awesome, wow. Okay, so that's our girl. Let's move to the next one. Okay, I think I have a, a tweet regarding that with... Uh, um, what's her name? Um, Scoby. Next tweet. Wow. Paris Hilton is way more intelligent and articulate than we've been led to believe. Don't believe the type or types with Megan Spotify. Where is that? Okay. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say at the beginning is her parents who send her. And I'm pretty sure uh, the, I, I, I'm not speaking for the parents, but I, in my humble opinion, I think at that time, when the parents saw something that felt like maybe I cannot help, you know what? Let me leave that alone. Let me leave that alone. I don't want to touch that. Okay. I used to watch her show in the early 2000s, but not a fan. However, she has the self-awareness of her persona and is moving forward. I really like hearing from the comedian as well. She had some very good insight. I like how Megan closed the pod about humanizing and getting her. Okay, me too. That's because I had accepted the stereotyping of Paris without questioning uh, any subtext. I mean, like I said at the beginning, um, at first they got me, but later on when I started seeing certain things, I was like, I started questioning myself. Okay, yes, my at Paris Hilton is a genius and a mogul and a DJ extraordinaire. That was something that I, what is it? I think her... The, the the Hilton family, I think it was from her parents. That was something that I was reading. This is my uh, basic understanding of it, not full detail. You could look deeper into that. I think, in my humble opinion, uh, they didn't leave any, some sort of an inheritance for her regarding that. But when you look now, uh, how she's moving forward, she could own that brand, the Hilton thing. Uh, I think she has a brother. I think she has a brother. Uh, um, I met Paris years ago and realized right away how intelligent she is. Her act made her rich, but she suffered a lot for it. Glad to see her get some recognition. Yeah, and I don't think um, the media will ever point the this aspect of her. She got brain and stuff like that, but they will rather use her, you know, for that personal that she was carrying. And then some people... Remember, when she came out talking about her mistreatment, her uh, mental issues that she was going through to some of her past event with the boarding school and stuff, and some of the comment that I was reading is very sad, where people think, you know, just because you have money, you should not have any problem. I, it's very sad sometimes the way society takes people. They don't believe you just because you have money. Mm -mm -mm. I and some of them I started questioning, um, you know, respond back to them. And then when I see they're getting too personal, I was like, you know what? Let's leave them alone. But it's very sad. Okay. It is amazing how we are influenced by harmful labels and we don't even realize it. That's the thing. Okay. When I was mentioned about Sidney Poitier, because he knew by acting certain roles that will influence other black men. That's the thing. Okay, so he will reject certain roles because that wasn't educational enough. There was one, um, is it, I think it was coming to dinner or something like that, where there was a scene where he was saying 
that uh, he see himself as a man where he was talking to the father about uh, something. Uh, he doesn't see himself. I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember the exact word in the, in the movie. I'll look for it. You know, he see himself as a man, not other than. You know, for a man who all his life never put a wrong foot anywhere, you're way out of line, boy. That, that's me to decide, man. So just shut up and let me... You don't say that to me. You haven't got the right to ever say a thing like that to me, not after what I've been to you. I'm purposely pausing or cut some parts out of that movie clip because, hey, I need to stop somewhere and alter the clip in a way so I don't get flagged for it. Yeah, I know what you are and what you made of yourself. But you know I worked my ass off to get the money to buy you all the chances you had. If you want to watch the entire clip, that specific clip where I got it from, I'll put the link in the description. You guys could go watch it or just go watch the entire movie wherever it may be available. I don't know. But I got the clip. You know how far I carried that bag in 30 years? 75,000 miles and mowing lawns in the dark. So you wouldn't have to be stoking furnaces and could bear it out on the books. I tell you, there were things your mother should have had that she insisted go instead for you. And I don't mean fancy things. I mean a decent coat. A lousy coat. And you're going to tell me now that means nothing to you and you could break your mother's heart? Well, I don't care what your mother says. Maybe she's gone haywire too. This is between you and me. That's the first thing you said that makes any sense. Because that's exactly where it's at. Yeah, and what I mean to no, say is... No, you said what you had to say. From YouTube, okay? So I'll put the clip, the link of that video in the description for you. You listen to me. You say you don't want to tell me how to live my life. So what do you think you've been doing? You tell me what rights I've got or haven't got and what I owe to you for what you've done for me. Let me tell you something. I owe you nothing. If you carried that bag a million miles, you did what you were supposed to do. Because you brought me into this world. And from that day, you owed me everything you could ever do for me. Like I will owe my son if I ever have another. But you don't own me. You can't tell me when or where I'm out of line or try to get me to live my life according to your rules. You don't even know what I am, Dad. You don't know who I am. You don't know how I feel, what I think. And if I try to explain it the rest of your life, you will never understand. You are 30 years older than I am. You and your whole lousy generation believes the way it was for you is the way it's got to be. And not until your whole generation has lain down and died will the dead weight of you be off our backs. You understand? You've got to get off my back. This is very powerful. These are the type of roles that he chooses to play. Now, I'm going to fast forward a little bit to the main part, the part that I really wanted you guys to listen, and then I'll continue with the podcast. But you think of yourself as a colored man. I think of myself as a man. Okay. It is amazing how we are influenced by harmful labels and we don't even realize it. Our types makes me examine my own feelings. Okay. Love today's podcast. Love all of them. But this one really hits home. Yeah. Yeah. Questioning things. You know, the things that those uh, media wants you to see. And when you look at, uh, for, inst for example, with the, uh, when the queen passed, when uh, Harry, Meghan, and the brother and his wife came out of the car, the minute I saw it, I knew it was a PR thing. I even said it in the video. The, the thumbnails even, I put PR 101. Because they want you to see them other than, other than. Uh, so we need to question certain things that we see on TV uh, because they will make you think that everything is perfect. But when you look deep down, there's issues. And I think I brought this thing up once before where, for instance, uh, you see uh, those uh, iPhone, or not just iPhone, just 
phone in particular. There's so many little games, so many nonsense, even on uh, on YouTube, where certain content they will let it be glorified to distract people. Okay, to distract people from reality, and they will make you think other than. Meanwhile, the government is running wild taking your right away doing all sort of things while you're just focusing on those stuff that youtube literally okay i have issues with youtube with my own videos i'm not saying i'm the uh, i'm the best or anything but when you see people who's making sense of certain things youtube try to discourage you and this is why i've said those 200 subscribers i don't know why i thought in my head passing 200 subscribers was a huge deal for me where i was thinking of the numbers and i'm so happy i went through it people who's been with me for during those time will understand because i bought this so many times so this um uh, what is it when I started the podcast and I want to grow uh, and I was looking at the numbers each time I reached 200 and YouTube was removing the numbers right and then when I re when I finally passed the 200 and then I waited after two weeks to see if the number will go back down again because that was the trend it goes up and then it goes straight back down it goes up straight back down. when it stays for 200 for like a week plus and I was so happy and then after that, my mentality of things changed and I started writing script and this is how I'm going to do my podcast and stuff like that. And then when I started recording the thing, I recorded it, but when I was listening to myself of what I scripted and I was like, wait a second, I went to a huge deal of, I don't know, I cannot explain it. And I was like, that's not me. That's not what I, how I want the podcast to be. And then I stop. I never finished edit the video. I don't know if I delete it or whatever, but I shut the computer down and I said, that's not the way I want to move forward. And then when I get back again, and then you've been seeing me ever since the same way. I say my silly things. I laugh. Some people saying stop laughing. And I realize it's some of those people who they want the podcast to continue who were saying that, um, you know. So I was like, let me just be myself. And then I joke around. I tell you what's in my mind and people responded back. And some people I see, I could feel when some people are commenting, they want to give a constructive criticism, but they're afraid I might take it the wrong way. And I was like, just say it. I will understand you uh, and stuff like that. So I move forward. So that moment, that 200 subscribers humble me down where now when i look at the numbers now this is something that will blow my mind to know there are 2894 people who are listening to me so i have to make good of that all right i have to make good of that no matter if you have one person listening to you you need to understand that you are influenced one mind this is the thing that i got with the 200 and then i start focusing on the numbers so when people are criticize me, I have the conversation with them, constructive criticism. I have the conversation with them to let them know I acknowledge you listening to me. So I see your concern and I will clarify myself a little bit more. And this is why sometimes I say the conversation continues in the comment section. I will take my time to respond. You know, thank God for my phone. Even I don't sit behind my computers uh, typing back or whatever. I'm um, responding to you as I'm doing something. If I'm, I, I don't know, on the train or doing something, waiting for my kids at the school, I went to the comment and I let, I read it and respond back to clarify certain things, you know, but sometimes I even said, you need to put the timestamp because I'm not going to listen to the entire video to see what, uh, to hear what I said. You need to put the timestamp. All right. So let's continue. She designed the blueprint and the uh, Carl Jenner's, okay, okay, Kardashian and the Jenner's, and the other influencers use. She never had a Chris Jenner in her corner. Her mom was instrumental in her kidnapping and subsequent torture. Um, we need to make clear of that. I don't know. This is the part where I said I don't want to go into, but there's the comment here and it's bringing that uh, mindset back again. With her mother, I think. Okay, in my humble opinion, at that time, maybe 
as a mother, maybe, I'm not speaking for her in my humble opinion, because as a parent, you don't know everything. So maybe she was trying something the best way she knew how. And, you know, kids will be resilient. They will not, you know, it said, that's not me. That's not that. I have my own life. So maybe the mother felt that she was not getting through to her. So this is the best way she knew how at that time. Okay. Because look at this, Paris Hilton is telling you what's going on in those uh, boarding school. So I'm sure many of those parents probably didn't know about these things. So now that we know, and I'm pretty sure the mother must have felt bad for that. Because she thought at that time, she was making the right decision for Paris Hilton. But now that Paris Hilton come out of it, um, she could explain her experience. Now, this is different. If Paris was telling the mother, this is my experience on that. This is what they're doing to me. This is this. This is so painful to me. And then the mother still, you know, ignore Paris's feelings. And then that's when I will have a little bit judgmental about that. But the initial one, I will forgive them. Well, it's not for me to forgive. I could understand. It's for Paris herself to forgive the mother because she was the one who experienced but as from the outside i could understand the mother for doing that but where my judgment will come is if paris was telling the mother this is my experience but the mother continues with that and said no you must you must you must then i'll have question about that you understand what i mean so we have to differentiate those two things because not parents don't know everything they will think this is the best thing because there are uh, parents who send their boys to military thing because they feel like this is the best thing to uh to show them the right way look at this there's uh, harry for instance who learned through the military this kind of thing all right so i'm just saying all right paris hilton created the caricature to disassociate from her trauma but she's brilliant all right she's very business savvy i never was a fan of hers and then i saw two documentaries she did she has been through hell and back and and is doing so much to help all the kids not going through the same fate i really like her now uh, i mean i never had any problem with her but the issue where i said they uh, they got me at the beginning Okay, with the simple life, I think that was the name of the show, the simple life with uh, Nicole Richie. Uh, I thought that was initially. I thought that was the way they lived because when you say reality, so I take it as face value. Reality is the way you do things every day. The, I just thought the camera was following them around, but later on, when I started questioning myself, and I was like, "Oh, that's not them. That's not the way they are really," and stuff like that. So I started to differentiate these kind of things. I, I started questioning the same way I questioned the British media with, with Megan. I was like, and I told you guys, I'm not making a front uh, for doing this podcast about Megan. This is not the most popular thing right now on YouTube, talking positive about Megan. If I was about the money, I'll be bashing Megan, find ways to bash her. But when I saw the consistent negativity about her through the media, I started questioning, you know, for those who are new, because every day I'm having new subscribers, so I need to repeat that. I was never following Megan on any social media. It's through reading some tweets, I realized she had a tag. You know, she she was on IG, she was on that. I don't follow a lot of people, but I knew she exists. The same way Paris Hilton. I knew Paris Hilton exists. I don't follow her on social media. Okay? But when, I, when she married into the royal family, you know, you see a woman of color, you're happy for her. And then the prestige that the royal family made us believe, at least they got me on that aspect, you know, the pedestal that they put themselves in, I bought it. So you were happy for Megan. I was happy for Megan. So every now and then, if you know, let me check on Megan, how she's doing. You see a headline about it, you read. And then I was like, every, the first time, maybe they got me. All right, the first headline, second line. Se second headline maybe they got me as well but the third the fourth the fifth and so forth so on everything is negative and i question myself wait a second this woman been living in the u.s and canada you never hear a beep about her anything negative about her. how could that be the minute she married into the world that's how i look into megan more okay and i said no this can't be 
this can be this is the same thing with Paris Hilton with me well with Paris Hilton I didn't go deeper and I questioned myself and I was like nah that can't be her and then I leave her alone at that that's it but the difference between Megan and Paris Hilton the way the media then bash her consistently and I'm sure she could have sued them in the US for that she's white blonde hair the ideal kind of uh, maybe I'm judgmental in this part here, but if you look at the differences between Megan and her and Paris Hilton, we could see why they don't, you know, trash her to uh, the uh, media or something like that. If they did, I was not aware of it. Uh, so it's because of the consistent negative bashing of Megan that made me look deeper into Megan and thus you have the podcast and then the podcast wasn't even about that as well if you look at my very first or second third videos nothing nothing about Megan it was supposed to be about politics where when I read certain things about politics and then put my spin on it the same way when I read the tweets I will tell share my experience put a spin on it and then I turned this into that. I turned the channel into Sussex. Actually, the team Sussex at the end was never there. It's one of the squad who stumbled up on my channel and said, maybe you should make yourself known that you are Sussex. And I was like, why would I do that? It took me a while. I was like, why would I do that? I will still talk about other things. I'm not just about the Sussexes. And then long and behold, you see, the. if you've been listening, you know how that goes. Uh, it took me a while to put to add on to the Sussex. I'm like, I'm not going to change it because a lot of time I joke about things like serious stuff that's going. But the way people seem to take it, it's really funny. In my head, I'm thinking it's funny. It should not be that way. This kind of thing. But anyway, why did I bring all of this? I don't know. When I'm editing, I'll listen to what I said prior to that. Okay. I never was a fan. Okay. That was that. Okay. If she, Paris Hilton, appears to lack intelligent or proper verbal skills to articulate her viewpoint, it is because she herself led people to that conclusion. It was her uh, shit stick, uh, her brand. It is what made her money. Now over 40, it's called rebranding. Okay, there's the thinking. All right, let's see here. I mean, she said she was playing that part, but uh, when people keep on accepting, thinking this is who she is throughout, she's rebranding. Yeah, yeah. All right, saying someone who's clearly hasn't listened to a thing Paris has said within the last few years. Okay, that's my point. All right, so let's move on. That's exactly that. You know, at, after a certain time when things don't work out, all right, you change, you have to evolve the same human nature. We need to change. Not everybody will be the same throughout. Harry rebrand, okay? When we look back at some of the things that were happening to him, he rebrand himself. And But when you look at the media in the UK, they want him to remain the same. Harry was like, no, that's not me. I have to change. I'm growing up. I want to raise a family. I want to do this. I want to do that. I'm not all about that. But the media in the UK who wants to profit off of him wants to Harry to remain the same. Harry was like, no, that's not me. Huh? You have to take control of your life because this is your life. You only have one life to live. It is yours and yours alone. If there's something to be blamed that you did, it's yours to be taken and deal with it, not them. So Harry and Meghan understand that. So this is their life. They have to live it. Okay, oh wow, next tweet. Oh wow, Megan had Paris Hilton on. She's on fire with this podcast. Arch type with Megan. Okay, great conversation. Yes, it was. The 90s revisited. She's on fire. All right. Yeah, all of the things she spoke about throughout all of her podcasts. I remember them like it was yesterday. All right, let's see here. Really love this one. I was going to say, hell, it's pretty hot. Okay, at least Paris didn't use any racial slur. Okay, amazing. Okay, all it took was marrying a man with... Ah, oh, please. Megan was already doing all her stuff before Harry. Whatever. This is the, the mindset of these people. They think most women need a man to put them on a the platform. Megan was already doing all of this. Okay, yes, her word salad and not on this understanding the definition of our type is really on fire lol okay thanks for the funny and brilliant response okay let's go to the you see the stupidity of people sometimes come through the comments that's why they use the avatar 
<laughs> thinking of the word avatar of Mamba Mamba, where the doctors was telling her about, oh, I think this was on one of the uh, podcasts that I did yesterday. I need to remove that part and don't put the mountain button into, uh, don't edit the por mountain button portion. But I think it was on yesterday thing where I was recording that part. Yeah, uh, where the doctors was telling, talking to her about some mentos what's the other disease that uh the doctors was trying to explain to her where they use avatar and then she said if it's avatar the movie i was like what the f okay it's in yes i think it was yesterday's podcast i need to remove that because there were some tweets that i covered before i went into the mount Batten one okay is that mama archie there's that Okay, it really is Archie Mama is really busy. All right, this is I mean, wow, show this to it. I have this coming further down, so I'm not gonna go into that uh, right now because I have it further down into my list. When was this today? Yes, sis, when was this? And I think this is why, um, uh, uh, Spotify also well no the queen died but um i was gonna say maybe one of the reason they postponed some of the ush maybe that's why yeah um they postponed the ush um the spotify during the queen's death to allow uh, megan to mourn and stuff like that because they knew um they were gonna have these kind of things the this whatever this thing um that uh form so yeah I mean, I'm not explaining very well. So, I mean, it, Megan probably already knew her schedule, but uh, because of certain things, they can't make everything public because, you know, there's crazies out there. So they waited until the, the after the mourning period, after the queen passed. And then too, hey, people need to move on with their lives. What is it? The media and the UK were blaming, you know, were upset that Harry and Megan, well, Megan continue with her podcast. Like she was supposed to wait like, 2000 years to come back uh, to do the podcast meanwhile the others the day of you know during the uh the wake i believe they call where they do the invite and uninvite this nonsense during that meeting there were some pictures that were coming out they were having fun all right so as if megan were not supposed to move uh with her life okay she is there's that yes archie and lily's mama next tweet I love when the squad be uh, putting those uh, uh, tweets out. Uh, very simple. All right, next tweet. Even the British media now know it too. If you're going to copy Megan, better come with creative, smart brain that only wakes up at 5 a.m. A deep personal interest in your audience and subject. <laughs> All right, let's read this. Megan Markle set bar so high with podcasts. Caddy's radio stand is no real comparison. Okay, I wonder who wrote this. What magazine? Okay, quote, it was definitely produced and put together, but it comes back to wanting those next steps. It was a lot of style, but not a lot of substance, the host claimed. How did it compare to Megan Marco's podcast? Oh, uh, are they talking? Oh, shit, they're making comparison with Megan's thing. Like, duh, there's this, no real comparison. Okay, they continue, quote, I think we expect so much too, and I hate to compare because I know there's no real comparison, but with Archetype, hearing Megan and how proficient she is at podcasting, it really set the bar so high for everyone else. <laughs> for all of the royals. Oh my God. This is why I love the squaddies. They're everywhere. They read everything. I, don't, I will not come across this. Wow, where is that? December 20. Okay, so this is different. So this one, December 24, 2021. So it's not the same here. But this must be more real, more recent. Yeah, because there's a picture of Megan with this. Okay, Megan Marco Crown, the most intelligent British role and new study. Okay, I covered this. Shit, was that also in last podcast as well that I was gonna trash? Okay, bef I need to review it because the Mount Barton part was second, uh, was second half. Okay, I need to make sure I don't trash that. Okay, Royal Valvory, Megan Marco, the queen like quality that Kate Middleton lacks. Okay, this is her uh, resume and stuff. Oh my god. 
Let's read some of the comment. This was the problem when Megan joined the royal family. Her work ethic and her standard far exceed anything royal family and staff had seen. What is it? There was one uh, video clip that I've shared with you. I think it was to CNN. Do you see any scenario by which Harry and Meghan overshadow Kate and... Oh, Maya? yes, I do. I do. I mean, this is... Immediately was my first thought. You know, th this, this could be a problem. I think there's another factor here too that Meghan is a is a very professional woman, and she's very American in that way. And the male-dominated culture, the royal household, doesn't like the kind of terms that they would use. They're pushy and pushy American. They don't like pushy Americans, meaning that they don't like professional people who work hard. And a lot of the Debbie kind of girls who get to work inside the palace work from about nine to twelve. Work from about nine to 12 and then take the rest of the day off and megan was very impatient with that she wanted to see a new work ethic maybe a work ethic as strong as the queen's herself where they said uh, the guy said that uh, may uh, the queen liked megan because of her work work ethic so the queen already saw that i mean yeah the queen <laughs> i think they speed process her uh her final days but uh i think she was smarter than everybody else in the royal family the clan she was uh, raising and she could read those people who was there to book uh ask kiss her and who was genuine i think i also mentioned that in one of my podcasts royalists still can't accept how lazy william and kate are that's why they tr uh, they bash megan Mm -mm -mm. the staff were lazy like kate and william that's why it was too much with megan's work ethic and commitment as a reminder megan was pregnant yeah because for those people the when they go to work what is it from 9 to 12 <laughs> that wasn't one of those videos from 9 to 12 is that uh you know they go there to probably chit chat have fun with the others but the other the the William and Kate probably never give them any assignment to work on. So they were okay with that. But when Megan went over there and hey, there's things that needs to be done. There's things that needs to do in the background. Like Harry will say, us, we don't need to know the little details that goes in the background. A lot of, a lot of the members of the public uh, get it. But in, sadly, in some areas, um, there is this, this sort of incessant need to find out every little bit of detail about what goes on behind the scenes. It, it, it's, it's unnecessary, you know. So these are those little details that Harry and Meghan were doing in the background. And those people did not like it. And Harry knew. This is why Harry married Meghan. Because she, he knew the work ethic behind Meghan's success. All right. So he needed someone as strong and hardworking as he was. That's what it is. Okay, I don't believe Kathy will even be in the top 10 after all the ridiculous thing she said and done. It takes more than grades to measure intelligence. Yeah, yeah. It takes more than that. There's common sense that works into things. Uh, there's really no comparison, but if they're going to compare, I like it that it is accomplishment and ability versus clothes or looks. Like Megan said on today's archive, being reduced to look and little substance can be degrading, paraphrasing. Okay, William Anger is that Harry marry well while he is with a boring woman who cannot hold a conversation. Oh my God, that thing that when she was talking with those doctors, I had to put the thing up and say, what was she saying? And then when I heard it the second time, I was like, what the F? She didn't prepare before, the night before. At least look who you're going to talk about. What needs to be, what you need to prepare yourself with. Okay, address people, much less write a speech of five lines. Okay, I don't understand how the other two are, number two and number three. The two of them together can't match Harry's intelligence and intuitiveness. After Harry, Archie, and Lily are tied for third, then three dogs and fourth, followed by all the chickens in the coop. <laughs> Javel and uh, Giraffe in the palm tree. <laughs> oh my God. Wish it was a video so that I can uh, see Clown bitter face. Okay. Uh, they don't seem to realize that Megan is not in the competition. That's the thing. They keep on putting themselves into Megan's circle when Megan is doing her thing. All right, she's focusing in her own thing. But meanwhile, they have nothing to focus on. They keep on looking 
at what Harry and Meghan is doing. If I was them, I want, okay, if I was them, I will not even listen to their podcast because you don't want to be influenced by them. Uh, even though Harry and Meghan are very influential, positive things to think about. But if they want to create their own brand, or maybe just listen to her to compare and see how you could up, upstage your your own kind of podcast if they're doing podcasts. I don't know. Do they still have the the YouTube channel or whatever it is? All right. So maybe listen to the podcast to see how you could improve on yourself. But instead, the only thing that they know is hating. Hate, hate, hate. That's the only way they could go. Uh, why even the way KKK sit there, she seems defeated and lack confidence. Okay, I only laugh when they compare them because there is nothing to compare. Megan is far above Kate in terms of intellect, uh, exposition, and association with people. I can tell you for a fact that this one of the reason for William jealousy and anger, one of two. Yeah, um, when they were all sitting at stage where Megan said when people, uh, women have a voice, they just need to be listened to, okay, just paraphrasing, I knew that where the, the hating started because there's no way. I, I've said it in all videos. Many people were saying, no, no, no. I said, yes. Oh, at least this is where the radar of hate start coming up. Uh, they realized, oh my God, this is who she really is, da da da. So they had to go on the bashing spree. Okay, it's really, it's a lesson that a lot of people have to learn. Podcasting requires strategic and continuous content. Mm -hmm. Yep, I love to see this. Poor Mambo, this must be driving the royal family crazy. Uh, that's on them. That's on them because all of this could have been their uh, positive coverage as well. But they went on the hating thing and they make their mouthpiece tell her to go home. And she listened. Hey, if they tell you to go home, what are you supposed to do? When you have a home, you could go to. If you, don't, if you want to be private, go back to America and live privately. It's pretty straightforward. So go home. Uh, and the thing they didn't expect is that we follow and say, oh, my tea, I'm coming, honey. <laughs> okay, the Megan is incredible. Kate is so jealous of her. She can't stand. And the worst thing of that is that they, uh, the royal family have the media at their fingertip. They have everything, everything that they could possibly need. They have the money. They have this. They have that. But what are they using it for? Okay, there's nothing to be jealous. If you are mediocre, go sit somewhere and enjoy your lifestyle. Okay, stop comparing when you know you're not. You know? So go enjoy your money. It's not... Hey, the people are more than happy to give you the money. This is why I keep on saying, I like Princess Anne. All right? She does her thing. Whatever they told her to do to get that free money, she goes cut ribbon and do, and then she go back to her lifestyle. Uh, she have no uh, excuses, no nothing. You were more than happy to give her the money. She's going to live her best life. This is why I uh, I have respect to that level for Princess Anne. Uh, people are more than happy to give her the money. But besides that, I don't know anything else. If she does anything else beyond this point, I do not know. But she's living her best life. But the others are pretending and they make people believe other than this is not. The, this is where I have the problem with them. Well, not really a problem. This is where my criticism come into play. All right. If you're not, just say you're not. There's nothing wrong with that. You're getting the money. Hey, go live your life. Go fly your plane. Go to many vacation every week. I don't know what you do best. All right. Kate, you don't have to compete with the wonderful, beautiful, and talented Megan. She can just use her skill as pianist. <laughs> <laughs> what I've learned about that piano thing is ridiculous <laughs> to entertain her audience. Oops, I forgot she gave a fake concert. Yeah, I, I remember that. Wait, what am I reading here? There's that. All right. Uh, I'm on hour here. I'm going to continue that podcast on video too because this is an hour. Let's throw a prayer. Prayer for what? Prayer for... Why do the word forgiveness come into play? Let's do that. I don't know why, but that's the word that came in mind. Forgiveness. I don't know. Let's remove the uppercase. Forgive me, God. Prayers of forgiveness of sin. Praying of personal relationship with God is the most important decision you ever make. Accept Christ today and know the ABCs of receiving forgiveness from God. All right. Let's take an image. 
Mm, I saw something back there. Let, let's go back. Where is it? This one. I was like, let me do that one. Okay, Father, Father, today I ask forgiveness of all the negative and harmful words I have spoken about myself. I do not want to abuse myself in such a way again. Transform my thoughts and let me understand how marvelous you made me. Change my habit so I use my tongue to speak hope and favor upon my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. Because what I was saying when I said about the 200 subscribers, how you know even with one person how much of a mind you could change that's what came to mind as i was reading that prayer all right so that's it please take a moment to subscribe like and share if you want to support this channel there's a paypal link in the description you could donate those who have donated thank you and by the way i have a cash app it's in the description if you want to support me through that instead of paypal all right you guys told me to do it i was not gonna go do it but hey since I want to be a gazillionaire on YouTube, so I created it. That's a joke, by the way. If you want to, all right, there's no pressure. All right, because I'll still create content no matter what. All right, so that's it. I'm going to do video two. I still have more tweets regarding us type. For me, it's a, an added member of the family. It's, a, it's, a, it's another, another team player as part of the, the bigger team. And you know, for all of us, all we want to do is be able to carry out um, the right engagements, carry out our work, and try and encourage others and the younger generation to be able to see the, the world in the, in the correct sense, rather than um, perhaps being dis having a, a distorted view. 